Thank you for joining us. I'm JP Gallo with AI Solutions. Um, we've worked with uh, Mark and CM First for many of years. Um, we're a network and monitoring solutions partner. Um, one of the products that we specialize in is, uh, is at Netta, a uh, recent acquisition of Broadcom. Um, it is a network and monitoring solution um, that was brought into the fold approximately last year. Um, we've been very lucky to bring Cesare Kowalik on to the ANI team. Um, he is a solutions architect with many years of experience with, uh, with Atmeta, uh, almost uh, over a decade now. So uh, I just want to say uh, thank you and welcome, and uh, I'll turn it over to Cesare uh, to, uh, to kick off the presentation. Thanks, JP. Hi, everyone. Nice to meet you all. Um, so yeah, as, as JP mentioned, um, I'm a veteran of the Epneta technology. I joined um, a and a little over a year ago, and I've got uh, currently um, a little over a decade of background at Epneta itself. I worked for the company, helped uh, build the product, helped build out the professional services um, offering, and I rode the fine line between business needs and use cases and requirements and the actual technical aspects of the product. So I'm well versed in both. And today I wanted to show you a little bit about what the product does, what it doesn't do, and the kind of use cases it can help solve uh, in the modern networks. Um, that is definitely not an up-to-date photo of me, but I'm keeping it because off screen I'm holding a puppy and I feel like it conveys a certain energy. Um, so that's me in a nutshell. The current use cases that Apnetas helped cover uh, can really be broken down into four categories. And these are the things that the company over the last few years have focused on uh, product management has driven feature sets to match. And as a result, it's become a very polished product that does these things very well. Um, there was also, of course, a focus on making sure that the feature sets match what competitors offer. But when it comes to these four use cases, which I'll cover here, uh, Apneta is a perfect fit. And for those of you that have never heard of Apneta or don't know what it is, um, I'll tell you about how it does what it does in just a moment. But it will help to think in the form of these four use cases. So I'll cover them first. Um, so first things first, um, almost every company has some kind of transformation product. Um, you are either moving into the cloud, you are changing um, to work from home or some other approach. And these transformation projects always have a before, during, and after. At Apneta, due to its ability to monitor both internal networks and cloud networks can provide visibility across such transformation projects, as well as to validate uh, whether they worked properly or not uh, pretty much instantly rather than after a few weeks of user complaints. So it tends to pay for itself. Uh, and, and, and then again, when it comes to such projects and being able to validate very quickly um, whether things have worked or not. Uh, Afnet is also very good at delivering uh, what we call work from anywhere performance visibility. So that most of you know that as work from home, uh, but Afnet has the ability to deploy not just as hardware, but also as virtual machines, as containers, and as software on laptops, uh, be they Mac OS or Windows. The advantage there is that this isn't a heavy application. It runs in the background to 10th of a percent of a CPU and as a result can now give you visibility all the way to someone's ISP as if it was your own managed network. You can properly lay blame on which network segment is impacting, whether it's an application in the cloud, your own backhaul data center, or that person's uh, remote workers at home ISP. By having such visibility, you can quickly narrow down issues and not waste IT time. In general, Apneta also makes the IT team more efficient. Um, when it comes to visibility into things like SD-WANs, ISPs, and other third-party providers, it means that the team that would normally be chasing down issues can now focus on their actual projects. Uh, what we call mean time to innocence instead of mean time to resolution uh, takes five minutes and not two days. And so once you know exactly which team needs to address an issue within their scope, the rest of the teams can get back to their projects and not be sitting in Zoom calls that last half a day trying to pass blame back and forth. And in general, and this um, shoes into how Epneta actually functions, it helps enhance the end user experience. And what I mean by that is unlike traditional network and application monitoring tools, Epneta does not rely on 
access to the network. It doesn't rely on SNMP. It doesn't rely on you being able to manage the network itself. It is like another user, meaning if your users can touch it, Epneta can monitor it. Is it a cloud app provided by Microsoft? Yep, it can be monitored. Is it a network through which you have a VPN or an MPLS connection? Yep, we can monitor it. Do you use SD-WAN? Do you use something that has a whole bunch of magic behind it and allegedly it keeps the best quality connection active for all of your users? Well, Epneta can monitor that overlay, but it can also monitor all of the underlays individually, tell you when they're up, when they're down, tell you whether they are doing exactly what promised to you in your SLAs, and you can even see how quickly the overlay follows the best traffic. Uh, with this, Epneta is able to gain visibility into layer three, layer four, typical networks. It's also able to gain visibility into layer seven, web apps, um, and it's able to do some passive monitoring by listening to what's already on the wire. And I'll cover that uh, in just a moment. Um, before I, I move further, are there any questions about what I just covered? Because I know it's a lot and it is different than most monitoring tools. I want to make sure if anyone has a question, I address it now. Nothing in the room, says. All right. Thanks, JP. So as mentioned, uh, Apneta approaches things in four ways. Um, there are uh, different ways of looking at your network, and this is where Apneta really shines. These tend to be able to work individually, but when combined, uh, become a real powerhouse of monitoring. And the architecture is quite simple. Um, in fact, I'm going to skip forward a slide to show you how things are deployed. So there is no server to deploy or maintain. That is already uh, up and in the cloud. You can go on-prem if you want. It'll still be a virtual server. But you, all you really uh, are, are focused on is what are called monitoring points. And these are some of the physical ones. Uh, there are, as mentioned, virtual machines, containers. So if you have Docker or want to deploy to AWS or Azure, um, the containers are a shoe in And there's software. And these will now be on your network. They will have an IP on some subnet or many really, um, as well as some VLANs and some other segments from which they will originate monitoring, just like your users experiencing your network in their attempt to reach cloud providers, SaaS providers, uh, other offices or data centers. Uh, these monitoring points will perform the same duties. And I'll get into the details of how they do that, but essentially there is coverage for one gig uh, wire speeds, uh, Wi-Fi, 10 gig and 100 gig if necessary. Uh, most WAN connections these days top out at one gig between remote offices, but for those of you running you know, exciting networks that have 100 gig between data centers, there is a solution for that as well. But once we have that kind of physical uh, deployment, we are able to then perform the monitoring itself. And that monitoring is done in four ways, as mentioned previously. By the way, I'm not going to spend too much time on these slides. I will actually show you the Epneta interface and the monitoring itself and the results. But I just wanted to give everyone a bit of a ground of how it works first. So delivery, which is in the top left there, the network paths monitoring, that is what is called active monitoring, meaning, sure, there are some packets on the wire. We're not going to look at those. We're going to send a few packets of our own. and we're going to see how the network treats them. What Epneta does there is it uses about two to 10 kilobits per second, a very, very lightweight in order to measure an entire segment, point A to point B, and it could be across the world. Every hop in between, every layer three, every layer two device, everything, including solar flares that might affect those packets is going to get seen because it's going to affect those packets. And that delivery component is able to not just monitor continuously, there's a sample every 60 seconds and a sample every 10 seconds when it sees something interesting happening. It's able to diagnose all of those layer three hops along the way when something occurs. And you get to pick what those thresholds are. If you only care about jitter, where well, you can say, please ignore packet loss or please ignore spikes in round trip time. But you can set the conditions and through that, if this is a link for voice, if this is a link for live video, versus a link for database backups or a general connection, you can make sure that it will only ever alert on issues of interest to you. With that, 
delivery is able to give you visibility into any network segment as long as you're able to route over it. And with Apneta equipment on both sides, it will do that bi-directionally, but even without Apneta equipment on the far end, like a web provider or a cloud provider, it will still monitor on a round trip basis by bouncing off the network card of the far end. It's pretty amazing stuff. And it will, on top of the metrics like jitter and round trip time and packet loss, it will calculate for you the capacity end to end as well, as well as the utilization of this link by cross traffic, traffic that isn't your own, but would limit how much you can push through if you really needed to. It's much more detailed than a flood test will ever give you. And it is not a flood as mentioned, two to 10 kilobits per second. So you could have, well, we have an environment with 80,000 of these paths and it's not very impactful on that network. In most cases, for WAN links, you'll need as many paths as there are locations. If you want a full mesh, that will help, but in general, you don't need that many unless you have tens of thousands of locations. So that's layer three, layer four monitoring. And I will show you an example of how that works. Then there is the experience segment on the top right. This is web synthetics. And what do I mean by, by web synthetics? Well, it's exactly what users do with web browsers. The monitoring points are running a web browser. It's Chromium. It's what Chrome and Firefox are based on. Um, it is also running a language called Selenium to step through workflows in order to um, visit this website and do more than load the home page. Um, it's able to interact with text boxes, buttons, whatever it is you need. Selenium is an industry standard uh, unit testing language. It's not something Apneta invented, but it simply chose to support it to simplify the ability to monitor things um, for those companies that already use it and didn't need to reinvent the wheel. The bonus is that there are already recorders out there for Selenium, so you don't need to learn a scripting language. All you need to do is uh, download a plugin hit record, you go through the website once, and then you provide that recorded script over to Apneta and you say, hey, please do that every five minutes for the rest of time and tell me when that website is slow. Tell me when one of the CDNs fails, tell me when DNS has issues, tell me when JavaScript is starting to crash and thus my users won't be able to use the website even though it's loading quickly. And so it's able to pick up issues in the websites themselves similar to delivery, you're able to set the thresholds. And for things like Office 365, Teams, um, Salesforce, whatever it is you may use, you can now have it execute the full workflow and find out if it's getting stuck loading a font or something else um, that might otherwise not be detectable by going to the home page. So those are the active monitoring methods. Yes, they get affected by what's already on the network, but they don't directly look at it. They simply perform their own transactions. And for layer three, layer four on delivery and layer seven on experience, they get to show you what it's like to attempt to use the network. When there are a lot of locations involved and a lot of uh, applications to target, the fact that there is comparison, and I'll show you that as well, gives you the chance to quickly isolate issues as they happen. Any questions at this point? Nothing here. Thank you. And I apologize for going uh, relatively quickly, but I do want to show you the real examples of the product as well. And I know everybody's excited for dinner, um, so I don't want to keep this uh, super long either. So uh, passive monitoring. Well, Apneta, in addition to doing uh, active monitoring, which is nice because when you have an empty office with no one in it and no packets to analyze, you could still, using active monitoring, test against the web apps, test against the network segments. But passive monitoring comes in real handy when you have actual traffic on the wire and you want to know what's out there. This is broken into two categories, um, flows and packets. The monitoring points, as uh, mentioned earlier, they have dedicated interfaces on them for mirror or span. They can also do inline if you absolutely need to. If you have a lot of locations with unmanaged switches, they do have fail to wire, so power cuts won't interrupt traffic. But going inline means that you don't even have to um, mirror a port on one of your switches. Once you have the traffic of interest, and remember, I'm, I'm not talking about NetFlow. Uh, we're talking purely a mirror or span, like a gigamon, of the real traffic itself. Epneta will take it from there. 
it will create its own NetFlow records. It will create additional metadata from the packets. It will then be able to run that through an internal database of currently 2,040 known applications and identify them for you from the flows. And it will give you detail right down to individual hosts, conversations with others on specific port numbers, retransmit numbers, QoS, everything. It's not going to look inside the payload of the packets or decrypt SSL, but based on that layer three and layer four information, it will tell you how much of your traffic is recreational, where it's all going, and allow you to make better capacity decisions when people start complaining that the network is getting slow. You can actually see that over the last three months, it's been going up by 10%, and it's all been BitTorrent traffic, and perhaps a network policy can address that instead of buying more bandwidth. But since Apneta is already plugged into a mirror or span and packets are already hitting the Apneta interface, it can also just do captures for you. Uh, you can schedule these, they don't have to be manual, and you no longer have to do truck rolls. Wherever you have an Apneta device, and usually the mirror or span is coming from the entire WAN connection prior to NAT, so you can see everything coming and going from a remote office with internal IP addresses still on it. Um, by asking it to do packet captures, it's able to give you access directly to the PCAPs as if you were there, and then you can throw those into Wireshark or whatever other tool you like and perform direct analysis. You can capture full packets, you can capture headers. Um, this comes with extra heavy encryption because at this point, real PCAPs are involved and not just metadata describing conversations. Um, but Apneta does have you know, SOC 2 type 2 and a whole pile of other certifications. Um, so for those of you with security concerns, uh, we're, we're happy to go through that with you and show you exactly how that's kept safe. But with these four approaches, Apneta is then able to provide very good visibility of what is happening on a network, what's already on it, and how access to web apps and other network segments are going to get affected. So as mentioned, this is done through what are called monitoring points, physical and otherwise. Um, the real fun begins when we move into remote workers. Like I mentioned, uh, workstations. Um, you can also use virtual machines or containers. These mean that you get the same functionality without the need to always ship a piece of hardware. In addition to these, Apneta can also deploy uh, for you worldwide if you want outside in monitoring. And there are customers of Apneta, now Broadcom, of course, that use this technology. Um, one of them is an education provider that drives their actual status page off of Apneta results. And I'm not saying they look at Apneta results and change it. I mean, it can automatically change their status page. The moment Apneta's monitoring detects an issue, their status page reports it to their customers. And they trust it that much because they've polished and fine tune those thresholds until it's catching exactly the kind of thing they would want to share with their customers. It's automated the entire process for them and it lets them know about issues long before any of their customers tell them otherwise. So those four use cases I mentioned earlier, delivering remote office visibility, enhancing end user experience, making the IT team more efficient and driving transformation projects. These tend to tie into each other but the most amazing part about them is that any network can now be monitored. It is vendor agnostic and network access agnostic. If your users can touch it, if your users can use it, if your users have a bad time on that network or application, sometimes Apneta can now monitor it. Combined with the fact that it can look at packets and environments you do control, you get a huge amount of visibility. And with that web app and Network monitoring, you get BGP visibility, you can see ASN changes, you have route history, you can monitor against APIs and not just websites. Um, it'll monitor with all three protocols. It will give you in, info about what's going on with DNS and DHCP. Um, and then you roll Wi-Fi into it and you get a complete picture. So it's very powerful stuff. Next, I'm gonna get into the three methods in a little bit more detail, and then I'll show you the actual product. Um, are there any questions at this time? Nope, good here. Thanks, JP. 
Okay. Um, so delivery, this is the layer three, layer four network active monitoring. Um, and for those of you trying to wrap your head around by what I mean by that, um, everybody's got uh, an iPhone or an Android, you've got Apple Maps or Google Maps. How does it tell you that there's traffic on a road? Do they flood the highway with trucks and say, well, we put a thousand trucks on it and 780 trucks got through. So it's, we're gonna paint that road orange. No, they don't flood the road. They look at the uh, allegedly anonymous cell phone data from everybody already on that road. And they say, huh, everyone seems to be moving 30 in that 55. Let's, let's color that road orange in our maps app. They're looking at either existing traffic or they're taking little samples and with it, they're able to detect what's actually going on out there. And delivery works in a very similar way. It's not SNMP based. It's not gonna ask routers and switches what their interfaces or CPUs are doing. It is going to experience that network for itself and it will tell you about it. It does hop by hop analysis for when it finds an issue. So it can not just show you which segment an ASN was responsible, but it's able to actually nail for you the hop. Um, this is automated as well, so that you don't have to worry about it uh, being manually triggered and it can do this over wired or wireless. It does continually measure so that even if you missed something or didn't think to be looking at it, the history's there anyway, and it has 365 days of data retention. So you have an enormous amount of comparison if you need to go back that far or look at an issue that you dismissed two months ago because you've now spotted a pattern. The alerting can just be based on your SLAs, but odds are we can fine tune it to catch more important events for you based on what affects your users. Um, and you can create uh, virtual network interfaces, VLAN tagged interfaces, those physical connections on our monitoring points can have many interfaces added to them, allowing you to measure multiple segments, multiple routes all at the same time. All of this can be built into pretty dashboards or integrated into other apps if you want, or you can have scheduled reports arrive. Um, there's also an API to pull the data out into a data lake if you absolutely need to. So there's lots of ways to consume the results and far too much results to ever look through manually anyway, but it's there if you need it. And with um, ANI assistance, we can actually fine tune this for you. We can be your IKEA furniture assembly person. After delivery, we've got experience. That is the web app based monitoring. Um, I mean, you're gonna monitor exactly and you're gonna experience exactly the same way as your users. So you have to pass through a firewall. You have to be at the mercy of DNS working, doing lookups for all those CDNs where the JavaScript and fonts are gonna come from. You're able to go through um, the full workflow and not just hit the front page, which will help reveal issues with um, more complicated web apps that have dependencies further down. And you're able to see an incredible level of detail that I'll show you, very similar to the developer tools waterfall you see in a web browser. Same thing, 365 days of data retention, the ability to alert on thresholds of your choosing, um, the ability to schedule reports and other functionality as well. And lastly, uh, usage, which is extremely easy to put to work. You give it a mirror span and you're done. Uh, you can teach it about other apps if you'd like, but just because it uh, starts with its own library of applications, it's able to immediately identify over 2000 apps um, and give you cross-location visibility. You get end-to-end -end QoS visibility. You're able to take a look at application and network latencies, retransmits since it's able to see all packets. It's able to see if certain TCP packets came through more than once with the same sequence number or uh, retransmit uh, efforts were made by either host. And it's able to capture packets for you um, as well if you need. So that's the summary of those three. Any questions at this point about how everything works before I uh, move on to the actual demo? We're good here. Okay. So this is the Ipneta product. Can everyone see this new screen? Okay, and I am starting in the experience section. As mentioned before, that is the web application 
monitoring. Um, it is active or synthetic, meaning it's making its own requests. We have a pretty map, but what I really have down below are all the various things I've chosen to monitor in my demo environment. And very commonly to most companies is Office 365. What I'm doing here is I am monitoring it from three locations, Vancouver, Las Vegas, and Denver. And from Las Vegas, I am going out of the default gateway like everyone else is, but I'm also going through my LTE backup. I wanted to know what it's like not only after I fail over to it, but all of the time. It's not an active active setup. Um, my default gateway is how I get there all, all of the time. And this is only used during failovers, but I still want visibility across it so I can hold my provider accountable. With these four sources of monitoring, and these are just off of my monitoring points as I've shown you before, I am then going to this FQDN, microsoftonline.com. That's Microsoft's front door. Once I get there, I perform three different workflows because I would like to really make sure I cover the kind of use cases my employees use. And to give you an example of one of these, if I take a look at the Outlook workflow, what am I doing? Well, I've provided it with a username and password, which I utilize in text boxes that show up on the page. I do start by opening whatever the home page is going to be. I then interact with the login button. When it prompts me, do I want to save? my credentials for future use, I say, no, thanks. This does not store any cache or cookies. The very next time I do this test, it's gonna be clean like an incognito tab. And so it's going to get prompted again. So I'm just handling it here. I then go ahead and um, work with a new email, make sure to discard it after I've sent it and I log out. Similarly for my Excel workflow, um, I log in, I interact with the login page, I go ahead and create an Excel workbook. I then delete it after it's been created and I've validated that it's there. And I go ahead and log myself back out and validate that that happened by doing text matching and triple checking that a specific logo has loaded that only appears on the logout page. With this kind of level of um, workflow, I'm able to handle just about any website, no matter how complex. In the case of Office 365, it's basically an application, but when it comes to your own corporate websites, anything with a shopping cart, anything with a CRM, it's able to monitor that and step through that as well. And what this does, and I'll show you the actual results, let's go over to Vancouver where I am, and let's go to the Excel workflow, because who doesn't like spreadsheets? This being a demo environment, I have purposely given it not enough time to execute, and it's going to fail partway through. And I'll show you what that looks like. Here is all of those steps we are performing, opening the home page, logging in, etc. If I look at just opening the home page, the level of detail afforded to me, this is not my app. This is not an app I have should have any special visibility into is I requested slash to get there, I needed to make a TCP handshake and I needed to wait to be served a 302 that told me to go over to office.com. That's a new domain. I need a DNS lookup. So I went ahead and did that. It cost me nine milliseconds. New handshake, new receiving of content, another 302 redirect, right back to microsoftonline.com, this time with a token. No need for a DNS lookup. And this time we loaded some HTML. That had references to JavaScript, to CSS, to images, and we loaded those along the way. This now shows me if any one resource holds up the page and it allows me to break out the network and server timing all of, of all of these resources so I can accurately report on if things are slow, which of the two is the bottleneck. Browser timing is included as well because things have to render and with a very heavy uh, and complex app like Microsoft Office, sometimes that JavaScript takes time to render. If they make a new feature or an add-on that adds 10 seconds to the page loading, even though it's not your network, I still wanna know. And so browser time is recorded as well. For apps that are your own, seeing things like JavaScript errors that might hinder the ability to use this app would be important to you. This on the other hand is not an app I maintain and the fact that the fave icon wouldn't load doesn't concern me very much. And so I'm gonna go ahead and ignore these. 
Um, as this proceeds, including the login step, we can see the post itself right here where the credentials got sent. Now I can't show you what's inside a post, so that's not going to be reported, AKA the username and password, but I'm able to see all of the headers, including request and reply headers. I'm able to see what specific user agent string I used. And yes, I could change this. I could pretend to be an iPhone browser. I could pretend to be an iPad and make sure that the brow the, this web app serves me according to what kind of browser it thinks I am. And if I'm using on an internal app of my own, uh, real user monitoring, I might find my X trace in here and match it to my RUM and be able to see the trace in there. With this level of detail, it's very easy to now prove fault. You can see if it's on your network, you can see if it's the provider, you can see if it's one of their CDNs. And when a failure occurs, the way we simulated it here by not giving it enough time to get through, Epneta will capture screenshots for you to show you what the web page looked like as the failure occurred. And in this case, it was shortly after creating our workbook. We can see that it was created and we can see that the um, website was functioning and loaded. This is extremely useful when the workflow breaks because you've detected a failure. You can actually see whether they are spilling a Java stack onto the page, whether they are showing you a 404, whether they're handling the error or otherwise admitting that, that uh, the page did not load. With that level of detail, it's easy to get lost. So what we can do is take a step back now and take, for example, a look at an issue reported by a user. Now I've created myself a quick tag so I can find all my Office 365 monitoring. You can create all the tags you want on these paths for certain projects, for certain monitoring. But here I have those three locations monitoring against those three workflows. And I'm gonna go ahead and compare their results. And remember, I have a year's worth of history here, which means if I go back to, for example, June 18th, of last year, uh, 10 months ago now, there was an issue reported to me by a user in Denver saying, hey, we can't reach Office 365. Can you find out what's happening? Can you contact Microsoft? Because we really need to be able to do our jobs. So I came in here and I said, let's take a look at Office 365 monitoring. Huh, that's interesting. Most of my locations continue to be able to load it in 18 seconds, including that complex workflow but three locations, blue, orange, and green are not. Blue, orange, and green are Denver. And when I put my mouse over these areas, I can see Denver bottoms out at a third of a second. Everyone else continues to do their job. So I don't think it's Office 365. I think Denver is having an issue. Okay, well, let me take a look at what's going on in Denver. Denver has a number of apps monitored. I'm going to go ahead and compare 15 of them here. And I'm going to go right back to June 18th. Well, that's interesting. Every app from Denver suddenly bottomed out. And I do have a point in time that I can use to check Splunk or log entries. But let's see here. Salesforce, Google.com, HubSpot. There's Microsoft Online. What else do we have? On Demand, um, Sauce Demo. We have a whole bunch of websites here being monitored and all of them pretty much simultaneously stopped being reachable. That's curious. DNS resolution was not impacted. Now I could be using an internal DNS server I can still reach, but I no longer need to follow up with Microsoft, or at least I don't think I do, because this does not seem to be a Microsoft issue. This seems to be a Denver issue. When I look at my breakdown here, I can see my network timing and my server timing completely dropped off. So, it doesn't really look like I'm getting there even through the network, never mind hitting the server side of things. The browser's got nothing to do, so it's also bottomed out. All right, I'll pick on Salesforce here. Yep, just as I saw, it bottomed out. So let me flip over to delivery, that layer three, layer four monitoring, and let me ask what it was able to do when monitoring against Salesforce. Here is my network leaving my LAN, going onto CenturyLink, passing through level three before entering Salesforce's ASN, and actually being able to reach the very web server and the specific IP address it has that serves me the web content. My layer three monitoring has no interruptions in it. Sure, I lost a few packets here, little bit of data loss, 
but I actually never lost connectivity. Every 60 seconds, I was able to bounce a full bucket of packets off of the network card of the very server that's supposed to send me the web content. So what the heck is the problem? Did Salesforce and Google and all of these unrelated websites have a crash of their Tomcat or Nginx or Apache at the same time? Is the sun particularly flary today? Probably not. It's more likely that Denver is having a firewall issue, AKA somebody accidentally blocked TCP 443. And maybe that's not the smoking gun, but I've eliminated a massive amount of stuff I don't need to look into, a ton of teams I don't need to bother. I can now go, hey, Denver IT, at a very specific time, it appears that no websites are able to load via TCP 443, yet all of these websites remain reachable. We can route and bounce off of their network cards just fine. What did you change at that time? Can you roll it back? And this being a demo environment, we created the problem on purpose. Um, again, because we are monitoring here synthetically, we are not looking at existing traffic of users. All we did to simulate this is we actually just blocked TCP 443 for these monitoring points, not the whole office, so that it would look like the same thing as if users were impacted without actually cutting off our sales team for a day. But um, it did allow us to demonstrate exactly what you would see in a scenario like this. And with my threshold set, I would have heard about this within minutes. Apneta would have informed me that there's an issue. I wouldn't have had to wait a day or two to hear from my users. And so in this case, we had experience layer seven web monitoring and delivery, the layer three synthetics, paint me a picture in about five to 10 minutes that allowed me to save the time of my IT teams and make them more efficient. Visibility into cloud environments I would normally have no visibility into and narrow the issue down so far that my mean time to innocence that I was able to not waste time by chasing the wrong directions. Any questions about how this works in an environment of your own or perhaps any apps that you would like monitored? Yeah, of course. Um, so big commerce, it sounds like the secret's out there at Apneta customer. Um, I can't really talk too much about their specific use of it without you know, their permission directly, but big commerce uses it to monitor their own corporate and public facing infrastructure. So bigcommerce.com being a specific website. Um, again, without getting into details, one fun thing they found um, is that it showed very large spikes in how long it takes to serve that content, but from very specific um, conditions and locations. Surprisingly, sometimes it was slower from inside their own network than it was from the outside, different CDNs involved. And by narrowing it down, they were very quickly able to, to realize, oh wait, I know the difference between these two environments, so it must be only one of these things. They're also able to monitor their network segments purely with delivery in order to see this, these kind of results, the end-to-end -end capacity, um, as well as utilization from cross-traffic, not traffic on either end, but traffic somewhere along the hops, perhaps crossing through level three. And with that as well, they're able to look at the, the hops along the way. And when one of them, like in this case, and let me give myself a little bit more room, when Quest here starts to be heavily loaded and losing packets, they know that it wasn't their LAN and only after they reached um, that provider, that's where the issue begun. They're able to quickly compare jitter and round trip time averages and maximums. And they're able to see that there is an MTU constriction introduced by that provider, robbing them of eight bytes of their packets. And when this changes, when it's been fine all along and then suddenly it changes, it doesn't take weeks or months before someone realizes it's not working as well as it used to, 
the moment that change happens, it's detected and now they could be alerted or again, because so much happens, including routing on the internet, perhaps they chose not to be alerted about this. It's up to them. So for important links like data center to data center, uh, dedicated connections, you can be alerted of any kind of conditional changes. But for things like web apps over the public internet, maybe route changes don't concern you. It's whether the website loads is fast and authentication functions. And so big commerce is benefiting from both delivery and experience. Um, and they're actually using the usage uh, component as well. And I'll, I don't have much to show you here um, because usage benefits from lots of offices all being uh, heavily staffed. And Apneta had gone work from home about three years ago. And so now there really isn't that much going on at these offices. But in Denver here where there's still activity, I'm able to show you and I'm going to pull back seven days here the kind of level of detail that's visible uh, when we're simply analyzing the packets on the wire. Out of 411 million packets, I can see which traffic falls into which categories just to give me a very high level view. And if I look at only the recreational activity, which was a small percentage of my total traffic, I'm able to see which particular websites are accessed. I can see when somebody is tweaking their portfolio, um, and visually I can see when, now, of course, I'm not gonna see what pages they loaded, but here I see the internal host and the various CDNs they were interacting with. If I look at the internal host um, and narrow it down, by the way, the filter over here is just getting filled out for me. I'm able to then see the one application, Fidelity Investments, and the host that was having conversations with some of those other CDNs. The pop in you are seeing is the fact that the local monitoring point is being asked to do reverse DNS lookups. It's inside the network. It might be able to resolve the 10 dots for me. And so that's why there was a bit of a pop in as it's doing those live. And so here I have the conversation between that host and the outside world. I can see the port numbers, the number of packets, how much bandwidth was used. And I can see the TCP retransmits. 226 packets in that conversation had to be retransmitted right down to application and network latencies. So I can see that my network is a smooth five or so milliseconds on average, but the application latencies vary wildly. And I'm guessing some of these streams are pulling from far CDNs or Ajaxing info over. Others are probably streaming relatively live data to tickers. This is an investment website after all, I'm expecting there's some live data on it. And so I'm able to break things down to an extremely high level of detail if I need to in order to track down an issue. And with this, every packet that I've mirrored, whether it's one gig, 10 gig, 40 gig, I'm able to get this level of detail on it continuously. No PCAPs, no Wireshark, just the history. Now usage being extremely heavy, as you can guess, only has 90 days of history, but that is still an enormous amount of uh, time to compare. I can take those same 411 million packets from the last seven days. And I'm only going seven days instead of 90 just to save us the minute and a half of load time it would take because it is an enormous amount of, of uh, metadata. Here's my breakdown of those same packets by QoS. And I can see that my EF tagged traffic is actually ranking number two right after my non tagged traffic. By clicking on it, I can see what's been using it. There's some OneDrive. Uh, there's RTP as expected, WebEx and a few others that should be using it. But I've got uh, some ICMP coming through here and there. That was probably a demo test. And if I look at um, Azure uploads and downloads, I'll be able to see the pattern of that traffic. And odds are that pattern is, oh, no, look at that. I expected a pretty smooth pattern, meaning it's ongoing continuous monitoring. But this looks like human activity. And again, I've got my internal external host. If I narrow down to one of them, because I'm seeing the same traffic twice, I, it's up to me which host I narrow things down on. I can go have the conversations they had down here, internal host uploading to the outside world. And I can see the 224 megabytes and the various um, ports that were used. 
using the destination port there, I can probably go do a quick lookup as to what that is. These are UDP packets now, so no retransmit details on these, but wherever available, that information will be collected. And I could go ahead and do a quick comparison. Now, I only have the one location in this demo environment running now, but if I have 50 stores, I can throw them all together onto one screen here. I can compare up to 50 locations and quickly get, and I'm gonna switch to my favorite, a pie chart, because no matter how many packets are involved, this pie chart will always be exactly this size. Is it uh, you know, 50 terabytes? Is it 250 gigabytes? It doesn't matter. It'll be a pie chart. It'll give me a breakdown of where all my traffic is going. And when I click on a particular app, all 50 locations will be listed down here and all of their traffic shapes will show relative to each other. So I can see if my Windows updates are happening at the same time or my database backups are running at 2 p.m. versus 2 a.m. Again, massive amounts of raw data. It benefits from thresholds you set. It will alert you on what's important to you and just collect history on everything else in case you need to look at it. And I do realize I trailed off from your initial question a little bit, but did I answer your question as well? Well, not exactly, but. I, Sorry, yeah, I, I didn't really wanna talk about how they use it because it, it is a private customer, but is there a more specific question to what you would like Apneta to do or you're wondering if it does it? Well, I'm just, I'm just curious in general, if, if somebody has uh, like their technology, it, are they hosting? Um, the stores and the commerce sites that their clients have, or the clients buy a product, buy a solution set from what they call it, or is it both, or is it a combination of both? So it could work either way. Um, there's a VoIP provider customer that chooses when they do an on site install for one of their clients to include Apneta hardware in the equipment they install. That now gives them visibility. Um, into the network performance from their own data centers all the way to that customer and vice versa. So when that customer says, hey, your VoIP solution is terrible, they can say it's not, and we have proof it's actually your network. And then they resell the visibility to that customer. And they say, would you like to also have us monitor Office 365 and other unrelated apps and provide you with the detail and do the monitoring for you? And so Apneta being flexible, it can do inside out and outside in and, and whatever combination thereof. Uh, most companies choose to use it in what is most important to them initially. And once they see the level of detail it provides them, they, they quickly come up with other use cases. But yeah, you can do outside in or inside out with it. You can um, send software or hardware to your customers. You can not at all involve them and simply monitor things you pay to use. Um, it's not limited in in that level of access. If 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 you can touch it via a web browser, you can monitor it. And when you're setting up the instrumentation, obviously, um, is it much harder to set it up on mainframe, IBMI, Linux, or be carrying uh, various machines? How does the instrumentation work? Yeah. So from an instrumentation I perspective, right. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, from an instrumentation perspective, you're usually not instrumenting the target. You're not instrumenting the thing you want to monitor, which makes this an extremely easy thing to deploy. You don't need to instrument the, the mainframe or the database or anything like that. Because it's meant to simulate the end user experience, your customers aren't logging into your mainframe or into your database and running SQL queries. They are using some kind of product or web app or some front end that then uses these systems. And Epneta will similarly experience those systems through that front end. You can monitor more direct using API endpoints if you'd like, but Epneta is designed to give you the entire experience through the similar front door of an end user. What it does not do is allow you to talk to a database directly. Could I bounce off of that database server's network card and tell you layer three info? Yeah, I could do that with Apneta. But could I run a SQL query against it and look at its logs and tell you what its CPU is doing? No, that's a device management uh, tool like NetOps, which uses SNMP. Um, same goes for mainframes. It isn't meant to be a mainframe monitoring tool, no more than a highway is designed for RVs only. 
Can it monitor the hardware that mainframe is sitting on? Yeah, of course, by bouncing off of its network card to tell you network, or if it has anything a web browser can access by telling you the experience that has. Deeper than that, it will be affected by anything deeper than that through its front door monitoring, but it's not designed to be a mainframe monitoring tool natively. Does that make sense? Yes. The idea here was, as Apneta was a standalone company, um, to monitor the widest possible scope and to make this a low barrier to entry. And so almost everything ultimately is customer facing, be it other companies, consumers, industries. Um, and through that, Apneta is able to hit those front doors, experience the full request and the entire stack it depends on, and when that isn't performing well, be affected by it, even if it can't directly measure those databases and mainframes underneath. Through that, it's able to provide value by providing tech timing info, even though you may have better tools to monitor some individual components. Now, I know we have about five minutes left and everyone's hungry. Um, are there any other questions I can answer? Good in the room, everybody online. I have a budget question. Oh, yeah. yeah. So I have, I have a question that has law enforcement and application. Like, where would this, where can something like this be? What would be the like crowd control? One of the things that come back to me is they say that the application has to stay up and has to be available whenever the police, you know, 24 7, whenever the police mm -hmm. are, are going to utilize the app. So how could, how could this solution help, help me have a good conversation? So basically an emergency network. Uh, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Right. So in a situation where the underlying network uses any kind of um, IP-based layer three technology, this can monitor the performance. Uh, obviously layer two will affect it, but it focuses on layer three and four. If we're talking straight radio band, um, 5G, or some other technologies that aren't IP-based, um, then this won't be a good fit for those as it can't directly measure them. Um, in terms of uh, isolating this from the internet, as you can guess by the URL, this is a, a, a server sitting in the cloud. Um, a server can be placed inside a private network and then the monitoring points talk to it. Nothing anywhere touches the internet or is reachable from the internet. Epneta has many customers like that, be it um, military, medical, or otherwise, where they absolutely cannot have, due to regulations, uh, this ever touch the internet. And so there's an entirely virtualized version of this with full feature set. It's not a, a, you know, a crippled smaller version. There are some customers that choose to use that private deployment purely not to keep it off the internet, but to physically locate it somewhere else. There's a, a phone provider in South Africa that chooses to have the server there so that when their own employees access it, they don't have to be loading a product from North America every time in their web browser. And it just makes their lives a lot easier, but it's still available in the public internet because privacy and isolation wasn't that important to them. So in, in the cases of um, signaling like with emergency services, um, if they have things available through an API or through a web browser that Apneta can provide visibility into the performance of everything depend that, that that front end depends on. And for any IP-based networking, when routing is involved, if they have data centers, if they depend on cloud providers, um, especially FedRAMP, to store um, information offsite, Apneta can monitor their, the performance of all of those IP-based networks and give them visibility into overlays, underlays, backup links, and you know, 24 seven performance and not just um, business hours. Commonly helps find things like, oh, that link goes down between two and 4 a.m. on every Sunday. And we were hoping you wouldn't notice. Nope, nope, you said SLA five nines. That's not five nines. Here's an example of Microsoft Teams being monitored from four locations 
where we can see in black outages and in red performance below the thresholds of the SLA. Um, honestly, information that would have taken about two to three hours to go through hundreds of paths and to look through manually and then probably a spreadsheet to fill out with every time I found something, but instead it's just summarized into a single page. I can provide my supplier and say, look, you promised this SLA, that's not what we're getting. Here's the last week. Here's exactly where the problems happened. And I have proof with my diagnostics that it was happening inside the Azure ASN long after all of the peering partners in my own network, those were clean. So I, I do need this improved or I need a partial refund. All right, so I know we're up against the uh, the clock here. Um, if you, Cesare, thank you very much for presenting. If uh, anybody on the phone uh, has uh, anybody on the phone has any questions about Atmeta, please uh, reach out to uh, myself, Mark, Bruno, anybody from the CM First team, uh, and we'll be happy to uh, talk to you uh, specifically and uh, um, take it from there. So. Yeah, we're happy to give you a demo for your specific environment, for your use cases, answer your questions. If you if you want to ask and throw specific scenarios at us, JP will happily schedule that with you, and and then I can go much deeper into what the product does. Honestly, this was close to 10%. It's it's a very powerful and complex product, so I'd love to uh, talk about it some more. All right. All right. Thanks again, Cesare. Thank you Take all for your everyone. time. Enjoy dinner. Day.